official election call. We sent a survey to all major Canadian federal political parties. The Conservatives, Liberals, New Democratic Party, Bloc Quebec Quebecois, and Green Party. We asked them to present their party's platforms on recession relief, housing, and support for the matrix of frontline agencies that have become the choice of desperations for so many Canadians, some in the room today. We felt it important for Canadians to know where their current or future government or coalition government would stand on issues that are so important to so many. And now, with polls in a virtual tie between the Liberal and Conservative government, government, with Parliament still prorogued, and with a potential non-confidence motion in the air when Parliament resumes, we could be in for yet another election. So we believe the questions asked last September are as relevant today as they were when they were originally written. The questions and responses. The questions and responses are available. The questions asked if the parties would endorse the prevention of spending cuts in the not-for-profit sector. It asked if the parties would endorse increased spending. If they would endorse the doubling of hippie funds. If they would invest in social infrastructure. And if they would implement a fully funded national housing policy. We also proposed EI reform and asked if they would implement social assistance reform. What? We are delighted to announce that four out of five parties representing all of the opposition parties have responded to the questionnaire. And three of them are represented here today. And we welcome Derek Lee. Liberal MP for Scarborough Rouge River. Tony <laughs> Martin, New Democrat MP for Sault Ste. Marie and Alabama. <laughs> and Rebecca Harrison, who's a poverty and housing critic for the Green Party. And I also want to remind everyone that uh, and we also have a distinguished panel of community representatives. Here, Peter Clutterbuck is with the Social Planning Network of Ontario. Gerda Kagey, Canadian Pensioners Concern. Abby Go, Color of Poverty, Color of Challenge. Laurel Ritchie from the CAW National. And Michael Shapka is with the National Housing and Homelessness Network. And I'd like to start by asking our community panelists to comment on the questions. Oh, I'm sorry, Laurel Roth from campaign, uh, National Federal Campaign, I'm sorry. I'd like to start with uh, Peter Clutterbuck, and I've been asked by media uh, if you can come to the podium, Peter. Uh, in, in the 1990s, led to high levels of homelessness. 
And finally, the labor market is eroding to the point that we have a contingency workforce, inadequate, permanent, underemployed people, poor jobs. And all of this erosion of our infrastructure has led to a downloading onto the nonprofit sector, the service sector, an offloading of public responsibilities onto a sector that is uh, really a low wage sector, not adequately resourced, more and more experiencing categorical funding rather than core funding. It is an exploitation of the sector that we really cannot carry the responsibilities of, uh, of public provision without being a true partner with government and other funders. So our challenge here today is to get the broader picture, I think, of the voluntary sector as a sector that can only do its role when it's properly resourced and it's recognized as a true partner rather than just a place to dump public responsibilities. Thanks very much. I am here to represent, I guess, the age, older people, Canadian pensioners concerned has been around for 40 years arguing for social justice for people of all ages. We've been with Campaign 2000 for years. We're with the Housing and Homelessness Network. We're the, there with you and we fight and will continue to fight for social justice. Two minutes, six points. Older persons are part of the community. We live in our communities. We want to die there, not be stuck in institutions, out of sight, out of mind. Our goal is home care, home support for everyone, based on need regardless of age. And by the way, it will cut costs of health care. Affordable, supportive housing available in every community to meet the needs of the people must be on agendas. No one should be living on the streets or in shelters. Street life is dehumanizing and wrong. Government at every stage, at every level, should tackle the determinants of health. If you're facing policy, you don't get the health care, you don't get the housing you need in order to be part, fully part of the community. Uh, that is criminal. Governments claim they're solving the proper poverty of elderly. No, they're not. Poverty is rising, it is increasing, and older people are losing their pensions as you have it. The poverty among Aboriginal people is a serious issue, and we are all responsible. And finally, mental health and addictions is a concern for all of us. Why are people suffering from mental illness shuffled to the back of the treatment bus? In fact, if you're older, you're not even on the bus.